Okay, so we're going to do a little experiment. Uh, we were on Facebook on the Elgu Mars uh, page the other night, and uh, a guy named uh, Peter Gervais, Gervais, Peter, just Peter. Sorry, Peter. Uh, he was um, asking about the state, uh, data safety sheet of uh, Inhibit X, which is a smooth on product uh, used to uh, prevent inhibition in platinum silicones from things like 3D prints, like these. Now, Inhibit X is a does work. It's confirmed. It works really well. It is a $50 product in a very small can. So he was looking through the data sheet, and I looked at it as well, and it only lists one product on the data, uh, on the sheet, and that's naphtha. Or naphtha, or nap, naphtha, 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 this, naphtha, um, which is basically just a paint thinner. Uh, now, this giant thing of naphtha here, this was uh, probably $18 at uh, Lowe's. Now, I've had this around forever because I use it to smooth oil clays with. It's basically lighter fluid, old Zippo fluid, if you know, if you ever used an old Zippo. But, and I thought, that might just be a solvent in it, and that's just the hazardous material in it. But then I look on their webpage, and they specifically say it is a one-component material, or low-viscosity liquid, and the one component, and they only list one component on their... Uh, safety safety sheet so we're going to test out and see if inhibit x is really just a really expensive jar of naphtha so what we're going to do today is i've got some fresh dice here that we printed on the elgu mars these haven't been sanded or anything all they've done is they've been pulled out uh washed off with isopropyl alcohol and dried and that's it so we're going to make a couple of molds, one without and one with naphtha. We're going to follow the recommendations for inhibit X. We're going to dip this three times, let it dry in between each one. And we're going to be using uh, Ecoflex 30, which I know from experience does not like the AnyCubic Gray resin that I printed these in because I've already tried making a mold with this Ecoflex on this polished dice that I did. And it inhibited like crazy. Just a big pile of goo around the dice. So we know this does not work with this. So if we can get the naphtha to work, we'll know it. So uh, let's get to molding, shall we? First, control dice. We're doing nothing to this at all. We're just going to mold it. So, this is going to be control. Control. And this is going to be product X. First, we've got to do uh, the treatment. So let's pour some uh, naphtha and do a uh, dip dry cycle on this dice right here. You get my gloves on. Okay, we got naphtha. We got our raw dice. And we are going to dip. Sit in there for a second. Okay, so we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to repeat that uh, two more times. Okay, looks like she's all dry. Not seeing any wetness at all. She has dried out. So we're going to go ahead and stick her in the mold, and then mix up some uh, Ecoflex 30. Now, Ecoflex 30 is a really nice silicone. Uh, it's a semi-clear. You probably clear it out a lot more if you degassed and uh, 
maybe did a fridge cure on it. Probably not as clear as sort of clear, but as you can tell, it's a pretty clear silicone. Uh, it is incredibly stretchy. I did, uh, we made Augra here. We made Augra from the Ecoflex 30. And as you can tell, she's very, very stretchy. It's a really good silicone, so I'd love to get it to work with these. Okay, I think that's stirred up enough. Now, a little trick when you're pouring silicone molds is uh, to pop any bubbles, especially if you're not degassing or anything, which you normally would with something small and detailed like dyes, is pour from a uh, greater height and try to get a very thin stream. And you want to start on the bottom of the mold and let it find its own level as it fills up. You don't want to, if you, if you at all possible, you don't want to actually touch the dice with the stream. So let's fill these up and uh, then we'll wait and see what we get. See, by thin streaming it like this into the bottom of the mold, it gets rid of all the large bubbles. Now you're still going to deal with uh, micro bubbles. All right. Now we have control. And product X. And we'll be back in about four hours. We'll demold these and see what we get. All right. It's been uh, a little over four hours. These should be cured. Let's cut open the control first and see what's up with that. Actually seeing no inhibition at all. Weird. Okay, well. Looks almost identical. I didn't get any inhibition from that. Well, that's interesting. So we cut these open and uh, there was zero cure inhibition on both the control and the naphtha test so here's the here's the deal which i believe is what happened now all of these that you see here these were all printed in one big plate on my elgu mars over there it's the same resin all printed at the same time now, when I said that I had uh, problems with cure inhibition with the silicone and this print to be specific, um, that was only like the next day after I had printed these um, was when I got the cure inhibition. Now, these have been sitting on my desk for probably about two weeks. And what I am suspecting is that the dice after a day, now these were UV cured for like 15 minutes under UV lamps. So they were they were fully cured. I had polished them and everything. Um, but they would only be two weeks and I suspect that they were still off gassing. Uh, and that is what caused uh, the cure inhibition. Which, since these have been sitting here on the desk, now these have not been exposed to any direct sunlight or anything like that. It's My studio doesn't have any open windows. All the windows are covered. I just have LED lamps. I suspect that these have uh, fully off-gassed and cured, and therefore we didn't get any inhibition uh, from printing these. So, in order to prove our theory that uh, Inhibit X is basically just naphtha in a jar that they charge you 50 bucks for, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to print some new dice 
and mold one fresh out of the printer. So let's go ahead and get that done. <laughs> so that's still printing out, but uh, I got bored and decided to uh, test out one of the molds uh, with some uh, real bronze powder. So I dusted the inside of the mold and uh, mixed it a good 50-50 uh, with part B, mixed it together, and uh, we'll see what happens. Now, it'll look a little weird when I take it out of here, but once you polish it up, it should polish like real bronze, because it is real bronze. <laughs> here we go. That is a bronze D20. I'll polish that up, and then we'll, uh, we'll see what it looks like once I've polished it. We'll let it set for a little while, make sure it's fully cured, but uh, I mean the mold came out nice. We'll polish that and see what happens. Alright, back to printing. Polished. At least some of it anyway. That's real bronze. Very thin layer of it. Real bronze. Neat. All right, back to printing. It's still going. All right. Print is finished. Let's get to testing these bad boys. We're gonna clean these. Cure them, and then we're going to uh, do a dip on one and mold the other one raw. Okay, we're gonna take the printed sprues off of these because I want to make as small of a uh, mold as possible. So I don't want the whole pre-printed sprue on there. So we're just gonna break those off. We just want the dice. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, ding, fries are done. We interrupt this drying time for a Guinness. All right, there we go. We got uh, Control and Brand X. Tomorrow morning, we'll come back and we'll see if we have inhibition on control and no inhibition on X, inhibition on both, or no inhibition on both. So uh, we'll see the uh, results of that experiment when we return. Okay, well, it's the next day. It's the next morning, and we have two molds. Let's cut them open and see what happened. First, the control mold. This was raw, so we'll see if there was any inhibition with a fresh print. Oh, ugh, yep. There we go. Big gooey mess. Absolutely zero detail on the inside of the mold. Total inhibition. You can see it right there. I don't know if you can see it, but I think it's just covered in slime. So, confirms the theory that fresh prints do in inhibit silic silicone, platinum silicone. Now, the big test is uh, Brand X. Let's see 
if the dipping in naphtha was the same as inhibit X and see if it uh, stopped the inhibition. It did not. Same inhibition. So there you go, kids. Looks like inhibit X is not just naphtha. There's something special about it. So, but you also saw how much I used, dipped it, because I followed the guidelines. Uh, so, you know, it's expensive at $50 for a, for a can of it. Um, but it'll last you a lifetime. So, $50 for a lifetime of dice? Yeah, not that bad of a deal. So there it is, kids. Proven that it is not just naphtha. I'm disappointed in the results, but that's how science works. All right, so catch you later. Thanks for watching.